Conference play. They are a special team led by a special player. Well, and that special player is Jim Les. Let me tell you, we've just run out of superlatives. What more can we say to define the value of Jim Les to Bradley University and his basketball team? The young man is plain and simply raw American energy. Today you're going to see in Bradley, certainly the team of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. You're going to see the coach of the year in Dick Versace, and you're going to see the player of the year in Jim Les, number 15. And of course, you take a look at West Texas State, the number 8 seed. They really have not Nothing to lose, no pressure at all, really. Well, they're in a pretty good situation, really, when you stop and think about it. It worries you from a coaching standpoint if you're Dick Versace. Certainly that is true. I think the thing that everybody needs to note that should they lose this basketball game, it's the end of an era for West Texas State. It's their last game in the Valley. If they should lose it, it is also their last game as a Division I member. Well, the Bradley Braves swept the regular season series winning both games, but this is a tournament game, and you know, strange things happen in tournaments, especially on a weekday afternoon. Stay with us. We'll have the starting lineups after these messages from your local stations. When you think of quality in television, think of Zenith. And now, during Zenith Super Value Days, you'll find great savings on all Zenith smart sets. Advanced system free models featuring world-class elegance and practicality. Get Zenith's new high-tech built-in stereo, computer space command, stereo projection television. While at your Zenith dealer, register to win one of five great prizes, including this exciting new Chrysler LeBaron GTS. Make a quality investment in Zenith Color TV. Prices start at $188 during Zenith Super Value Days. Starship. Rock and roll at the speed of light. Saturday, March 8th. We built this city on Starship in the Peoria Civic Center. The Starship. Rockin' a Saturday night. Tickets at the center box office at Ticketmaster are charged by phone. Starship. Remember, this one's for you. What do you like about Avantis? Whether you love our pizza, pasta, or our famous gondola, Avanti's low prices and great taste will satisfy the Italian food lover in everyone. When the weather turns your basement into a wet, ugly mess. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet tonight. Where's light beer? W-E-E-K, a Price Communications Corporation state. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Tulsa Convention Center Arena for today's opening game in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. And now let's meet the starting lineups. First of all, for West Texas State, a 6-5 junior from Mesquite, Texas, number 24, David Woods. For Bradley, a 6-8 sophomore from Norman, from Nowata, Oklahoma, Donald Powell. For the Buffaloes, a 6'7'' senior from Buffalo, New York, Fred Johnson. For the Braves, a 6'7'' sophomore from Havana, Illinois, number 40, Trevor Trippi. At center for West Texas State, a 6'6'' senior, he's from Tulsa East Central, number 34, William Childs. At center for the Braves, a 6'8 senior from Chicago, number three, Mike Williams. At guard for West Texas State, a senior at 5'11, number 14 from Washington, D.C., Earl Davis. At guard for the Braves, a 6'3 sophomore from Chicago, number 33, Percy Hawkins. At the other guard post for West Texas State, a six-foot junior from Society Hill, South Carolina, number 22, Jerry Singletary. For the Braves, I-5-11 senior, he's from Niles, Illinois, number 15, Jim Less. And the coaches in his second season at West Texas State, Gary Moss, in the eighth season at Bradley, head coach Dick Versace. We'll be back with the opening tap. This is the SNI Television Network. Oh! 
all you gotta do is think refreshment. And you can move that can right into your hand. Come on, concentrate. Nothing. And Carter. Think big refreshment. Can't you taste it? That's not happening. Take a break. Could you think down? People drive from all over central Illinois to Sam Lehman Chevy Olds Pontiac in Eureka. We shopped around and we called Lehman's and they said they could beat any deal and they did. They buy new cars. I like the service. Generous trade and allowance. They buy used cars. Honest place. I like the friendly staff. And they just keep coming back. I would buy my next car there. Sam Lehman Chevrolet is it's worth the trip. trip. It is worth the trip to Sam Lehman Chevy Olds Pontiac in Eureka. Doug Bell, 5.30 and 10 on 19 Eyewitness News. 19! Broadcast journalism was founded on three principles. Dedication, accuracy, and fairness. Terry Scott incorporates these principles into her reporting, but she also digs deeper. When Mitsubishi announced plans affecting the heart of Illinois, Terry Scott was there. She traveled to Pittsburgh to determine how that town rose to prosperity and how Peoria might do the same. Terry takes the time to discover how news affects people, people like you. What is important to you, turn to Terry Scott, weeknights at 5.30 and 10 on 19 Eyewitness News. Game. game one of the Missouri Valley Conference postseason championship. West Texas State on the left and, of course, the Bradley Braves on the right. Bradley in the home uniforms. There are the officials, Spittler, Wilco, and Burkholz, three of the finest in the Missouri Valley Conference. Ron Spittler with the basketball at center court. Williams and Childs on the tap. And we're underway. That's Trevor Trippy, number 40, and here's Jimmy Les, player of the year of the Missouri Valley Conference. Hersey Hawkins in the corner. Bradley Braves on offense. West Texas State settling into his own defense, trying to deny the middle. Mike Williams had a big game in the middle up in uh, Peoria against West Texas State. Less off the mark, and the rebound cleared by Fred Johnson. So the Buffs start up, and here's the point guard, Earl Davis, second in the Valley in assists. Buffalo started in the matchup zone, Wayne. We'll look at that a little bit closer as the game progresses. Bradley doing pretty much the same thing, trying to match. Buffs are a tempo team. They'll try to slow it down, work the basketball, look for the best shot. They're not a team that's going to want to get into a running match with Bradley, Coach. No, they certainly do not. For several reasons. Number one, they don't have as much talent. And number two, they just do not have the depth to do that. There are two people sitting on the West Texas State bench that can play. Down to five to go on the shot clock. Here's the shot from the outside by William Childs. And the tap is good by David Woods. Excellent shot by Woods getting inside. Offensive position. Gets a left-handed tip in. 6'5", Jr. from Mesquite, Texas, and he did the job at good position on the play. Bradley Brave trailing by two in the early going. Pass off the mark, it's headed for Jimmy Les, and as soon as he grabs it, it's over and back. So West Texas State gets it back, leading in the early going by the score of 2-0. There's David Mo uh, there's uh, Coach Moss, Gary Moss. Thinking for a minute of David Moss. I <laughs> well, I think that's going to happen today with all the basketball games we're going to be seeing, Wayne. Should be an excellent tournament. It really will. Greg Jones reports on now for the Bradley Braves on the front line, replacing Donald Powell. Coach Versace is very unhappy. 1-3-1 one, one zone right here, Coach. All right, it's a, it's a matchup. What you want to do in this case is not dwell on what the alignment is. They are going to match. You're going to have to have good ball movement. West Texas is not going to shoot the ball. Singletary from the outside connects. They will not shoot it quickly. They're going to run time off the clock with every ball possession, and that's probably the smart way to approach the game. Buffs leading by four now. It's still the early going. Braves yet to score. Trevor Trippy from the deep baseline. Rebound back to have to corral by Hawkins. Less at the point once again. He'll take it from there. West Texas State, as I mentioned, what Coach Moss wants to do is deny the inside game to Bradley, force the Braves to beat him from the outside, and they're capable of doing that at the guard position with Jimmy Les and Hersey Hawkins. 
Uh, we see Bradley wanting to apply three-quarter court pressure after they score. And you see a little bit different zone there. Singletary once again for the outside. This time off the mark. Jones, the rebound. Jimmy Less in transition. And here come the Braves. Less does not have the numbers in his favor. Slows it down for the corner. It's Hawkins. The rebound yanked out of the play by Fred Johnson to the bus. Earl Davis comes back the other way. West Texas, one of the better defensive teams of the Missouri Valley Conference this season. And again, that was a contrast to what we saw the first few years we were doing games at the conference. Fred Johnson, it won't drop. The rebound back tapped and chased down by the Braves along with David Woods and they give the jump ball indication. Both touched it as it went out of bounds and I believe on the alternating possession it belongs to West Texas State. Now the officials Rich Wilco talking over with uh, Spittler. We'll take another look at it here and see if it was a tie. The ball off the rim right here. Mike Williams battling for it inside. Well, I got a jump ball because both players had a hand on the basketball. Real tough call. Tough one to have you go, go against you if you're Gary Moss, I'll tell you that. Ball awarded to the Bradley Braves. He trailed in the early going by two. Wayne, let me point out the mismatch in the ball game, and that's number 14 having to guard the same side of the floor where Hersey Hawkins is. Less to won't right go. There. Hawkins has the rebound, goes back up, and he's clobbered inside. And Ron Burkholz has the foul against the West Texas State Buffaloes. Earl Davis is trying to match up with Hersey Hawkins. Number 14 for West Texas State, trying to match up on the same side of the floor with Hersey Hawkins, number 33. You see it right there. You see Hawkins standing behind Davis, and that's not going to work. Bradley needs to capitalize on that. Singletary picks up his first personal foul for West Texas State. Bradley resumes offensively, trailing 4-2 in the early going. Hawkins can shoot over here. Jones got a lazy pass intercepted by Johnson after being deflected. Now Singletary out of the backcourt does control the dribble, but just barely. Earl Davis sets it up. As I mentioned, he averages five assists per game, ranked second in the Valley. Singletary feeds Johnson. David Woods has a good outside shot, number 24. Johnson would like to go inside with it. Bradley packing that zone defense once again. They'll run time off the clock. Good game plan. Here's David Woods from the outside. A brick off the backboard, and the rebound taken by Trippy. Jim Les now in transition for the Bradley Braves. In the corner, it's Hawkins. Back to Les. So the Braves back off on it. Now the alley oop inside to Williams. There's a mismatch down low. Here. The ball stripped away by Earl Davis. It's loose on the floor. Can Les control? No, he can't. It'll belong to West Texas State. Real good effort. Good hustle on a part of West Texas State. Jimmy West made a good effort, too. Nick Versace up off the bench. Third turnover now for Bradley. West Texas State yet to turn it over. He got a change in his own defense. They have moved Trimpey to the point to put additional pressure on the shooters out front. Earl Davis, number 14. That's David Woods on the wing. There's Singletary for the outside. Just short off the front of the rim, and Jones picks up the rebound. That's the purpose of it right there. Les fires ahead to Trimpey off the glass, and it hammers home. First two points of the game for Trevor Trimpey. Bradley pressing in the backcourt. Singletary is it poked away by Trimpey, but he's guilty of a reaching in foul. Rich Wilco with that call. First foul of the ball game on Trimpey. I believe the first on the team. Trevor Trimpey, the interesting note on him, he is one of only three players in Bradley history to score 100 points, take 100 rebounds, dish out 100 assists in a single season. Jim Les being one of the others. West Texas State resumes. We're tied at four and almost five minutes into the first half of play. Earl Davis gets it back to Singletary on the penetration. Partially blocked by Hawkins, taken out of the air by Williams. Now Jim Les pushes it up the floor. In the corner, that's Hawkins. Now less on the wing. Inside of Mike Williams down low, and there's not much West Texas State can do about it. When Williams gets it in that close, they just don't have the size. Well, not only the size, but they don't have the fault. The strength is going to be a real factor, and it's going to wear them down as the game progresses. Bradley trying to trap in the backcourt. This is William Childs off the glass. Trippy garners the rebound and lost it on the baseline. It'll belong to the bus. 14-31 left to go. We're first half of play. The Bradley Braves, after trailing 4-0, now lead the West Texas State Buffaloes by the count of 6-4. We'll be back after these messages. This is the SNI Television Network.
to hold or to give it to those. So give yourself the sense of security. You've heard how an IRA lets you save tax sheltered earnings for retirement. Security Savings will show you the IRA investment options that will help you grow safely to maturity. All the advantages it takes to earn and save more for a rewarding retirement. Variable rate IRAs and lower minimum deposits on high interest time certificates. Plus up to $1,000 tax savings. Get the IRA with security built into it. Security Savings and Loan member FSLIC. True Value Hardware Stores mean top quality hardware, and our Hardware Week Circular means great savings for you. This True Temper Lawn Rake with 22 steel tines is just $299, and the Master Electrician Safety Outlet that protects you against ground faults is only $999. For security, get this GE Miser Flood Lamp for just $449, and the ITT Quartz Halogen Light for only $1499. They're all in the Hardware Week Circular from participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. looking to become only the fifth league team in 10 years to win both the regular season conference championship and the postseason tournament title in the same season and that's amazing when you consider that the top seed in previous years the previous nine years of this tournament got the home floor berth as long as they were alive in postseason play that tells you a little bit about the league Wayne it certainly does single Terry up high there's William Childs he's played very well down the stretch for the Buffs West Texas State going with seven players Orlando Graham left the team over disciplinary problems single Terry from the outside again comes up short Childs had the rebound with good position but couldn't handle it and lost it out of bounds there's Gary Moss on the sidelines for West Texas State he's done a good coaching job although it's been a very difficult year for him down at West Texas well it's a tough situation and they're moving down to Division II next year uh, they'll be a strong Division II basketball team NCAA being led by Bradley in winning percentage this year Jimmy Les one reason why yes it counts in a foul score the field goal David Woods picks up the foul to his first, second on the team, and we'll watch it again. Here's your player of the year right there. Gets the jump shot away, makes it look easy, and gets knocked to the floor. Now we'll go to the free throw line. Jim the, young, the young man's really something. He just does so many things to help his basketball team. At the charity stripe, shoots 75%. Good position of the rebound again by Childs. Earl Davis takes it across for West Texas State. Here's David Woods. You continue to see a different look from Bradley at the defensive end of the floor. Sometimes you see a one-guard front in the matchup zone. Sometimes you see a two-guard front. Either way, you must not dwell on that. And from the outside, Earl Davis shoots over the zone for two. Bradley's lead is cut to two. Davis has his first field goal of the game for West Texas State. Out inside from Hawkins off the glass he goes. Pretty good defensive job by number 10, Fred Johnson. Coach Moss wanted a charge on that play, but it was not called. The pressure in the backcourt, and Fred Johnson holds up on the wing. Earl Davis resets the Buffalo offense. David Woods looking for room. Fred Johnson at the foul line. Oh, the Buffs hanging in there. They trail by two. We're almost seven minutes into the first half of play. Now Les settles down the offense for Bradley. Donald Powell back to Les. Hawkins to work the ball around the perimeter. Trevor Trimpey, one of the unsung heroes for Bradley. Hawkins from the outside. Trimpey kept it alive. Taken off by Fred Johnson, and here come the running Buffs. Earl Davis now has to slow it down as the Braves get back quickly. West Texas State, Davis takes it to the outside, and he connects. Earl Davis has tied the game. Four unanswered points by West Texas State. The longer West Texas State is able to stay with Bradley, the bigger advantage it is for them. You Hawkins. want to try to put an opponent like that away early if you can. Trippy shot isn't there. Singletary plays loose the rebound. And the Buffs on the move. Singletary holds up on the wing. Childs in the corner. Now they go back to the point. Earl Davis. Davis, the senior from Washington, D.C. Had 10 assists and 5 steals against Alabama State earlier this year. Singletary again from the outside. And he hits the mark. West Texas State with six unanswered points takes a two-point lead. Bradley must get Hawkins into the basketball game. Mercy is not yet into this basketball game. Jimmy Les looks over what appears to be his own defense by the Buffs. He's out there, but he really 
hasn't been a factor yet. Hawkins on the weak side, picked up quickly. Less back to Hawkins. Inside, Donald Powell with the turnaround. Williams claims the rebound, back up strong, and he's fouled. Two-shot foul coming up, I believe it's on David Woods. Woods fighting hard in there. He has taken over for Orlando Grant. We mentioned he departed the team last month. Second personal on David Woods. That's the third on the team. But I mentioned West Texas State has played with seven players now for eight games this season. And they have never been down to the final five. Are their latest reports on for West Texas State? They've never fouled out two people in one game and been down to just five players, which I think is amazing. Williams at the free throw line. Connects on his first. He's got another coming up. What a season he had. 13.5 points, seven rebounds a contest. Free throw percentage not good at 54%. This guy very much a key to this team. They can always expect that Hawkins and Wes are going to be pretty consistent. When this guy plays well, in addition to those guards playing as well as they normally do, Bradley is really tough. What a year they've had. 29 wins. 11.20 left to go, first half of play. Bradley trailing by a point. Singletary works it to latest in the corner. Again, West Texas doing exactly what Bob Ortigle said they'd do. It. Control the tempo, slow it down, work the basketball. The longer they stay with Bradley, the better the chance. Singletary up high. Yeah, they do nothing but gain and confidence. Latest from the corner connects, and West Texas leads by three. I tell you, that's got to help that young man. Comes off the bench, hasn't played much, gets a shot on the baseline, and sticks it. Len Bertolini inserted into the lineup to help the outside shooting for Bradley. Powell inside, glasses it no good, taps it all. Donald Powell connecting once again. He's got two for the field. Good job on the offensive glass by Powell. You want to keep the ball alive as an offensive rebounder. If you can't get it in, your teammate can get it, and he'll get it in. Singletary from deep comes up short once again. Hawkins on the tap along with Powell trying to pry it loose, and we've got a foul on the Bradley Braves. Donald Powell guilty of the foul. First, first personal foul on Powell, only the second on the team. We get a look at Powell over the top right there, made contact with his body. Childs on the inside. Drawing that foul when Paul went up to rebound over the top of it. West Texas State again works the perimeter. Bradley's played predominant zone here in the first half. And now you see a two-guard front again. So it, it, it's really combination defenses on the part of the Braves. William Childs out of the corner. Hawkins takes the rebound. Jimmy Les, the outlet man, and he races it across. Look at the offensive pressure the young man applies. With every ball possession that Bradley gets, he puts great offensive pressure on a team. He makes you get back. Bertolini, very good outside shooter, number 44, and gets it away. Yes! You bet he can shoot it. He made the right statement there. Transfer out of Loyola of Chicago. Len Bertolini has provided the spark off the bench for Bradley in recent games. I think he's an overachiever, Wayne. I really do. He's an overachiever on a good basketball team. Oh Arthur latest with the penetration. The shot blocked by Williams, but I believe he was bumped on the play. Ron Spittler comes out of there with the call. And it's going to be on Percy Hawkins, his first personal. And that's number three on the team. We've got 9.35 left to go first half of play. Two shot foul coming up for Arthur Latest. Power forward type transfer from Seminole, Oklahoma Junior College. Very good shooter. First trip to the line. Has two points here this afternoon. As Bob mentioned, hasn't played a whole lot this year, but West Texas is in a position where when you've got seven players on your run, you ever been in that situation? Not down to seven, no. That's not very many players, but keep in mind that that's not a factor. I mean, you can, you can, as long as you start the game with five, you can finish it with one. Jim West pushes it back up the floor. We're tied at 15, 9.27 left to go. First half of play. Game one of the 10th Annual Missouri Valley Conference postseason tournament. Percy Hawkins up high. There's Bertolini on the wing. Mike Williams baseline. Len Bertolini, the open man. Fred Johnson takes the long rebound. West Texas in possession now. Tied at 15. Earl Davis receiving instructions from his coach, Gary Boss. And once again, we see him milk that clock a little bit. As long as they're doing that, it really is in their favor and takes the game away from the Bradley Braves. And also, they're not going to have to go as deep on the bench. I think what they're shortening the game in effect, right? Yeah, what you'll see in time, though, Wayne, I think Bradley will extend and, and really apply pressure. But that pressure is so much more effective. You've got to score first. Fred Johnson trying to penetrate, and as he does, he's called for steps. 
minutes, 36 seconds left to go. As we have it, that's the first turnover of the first half for West Texas State. The running buffs are hanging tough. They have tied the Bradley Braves at 15 apiece. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. You say you want to start an IRA tax savers account at one of the better banks, but you just don't have the money right now? Well, wait no longer. One of the better banks close to you will lend you the money to start the account, and at just a minimal amount of what the bank pays you. While if you crank in what you save in taxes, you're still probably money ahead. If you're serious about saving on taxes with an IRA tax savers account, then come see one of the better banks today. They'll lend you the money to start the account. Isn't that nice? Oh, hey, come on. Got a minute? Sure. I uh, saw what you did for my neighbor. Over. Most people come to Kim Lawn because of the work we've done for their neighbors. Tell me Besides feeding your lawn, our people are specially trained to control the weeds and insects that can damage it. This kind of service is what makes Kim Lawn different, and it's why we can guarantee you a healthier, more beautiful lawn or your money back. Excuse me, Kim Lawn, you got a minute? Be right with you. Call now for Kim Lawn Care. We give our people better training, they give you a better lawn. Satisfied customers talk about Peek and New Car Dealers. We shopped all around. But we found our best deal with the Peek and New Car Dealers. I thought I saved several hundred dollars. After shopping with some of the other communities in the area, I came back to Peek and I felt that I got the best deal right here at the Peek and New Car Dealers. I've gotten my best deals from Peek and Area. These new car owners save by shopping in Pekin. You can, too, for the best selection of new cars at the best price. See your Pekin New Car Dealer today. I got the best price at the Pekin New Car Dealers. Wayne Larravee with Bob Ortigo back in Tulsa. Game number one of the 10th Annual Missouri Valley Conference Postseason Tournament. There's Bradley coach Dick Versace and his team. Take a look at some of the numbers of this first half. Well, Bradley and West Texas State are both at this point shooting 7 for 17 from the field for 41%. West Texas is 1 out of 2 from the free throw line. Bradley 1 out of 3 from the free throw line. The Braves have 13 rebounds. The Buffaloes have 9. Bradley with 3 turnovers. West Texas with 1. Bradley scoring 8 to 2 in the paint over West Texas State. Obviously the Braves going to be able to get it inside. The Bucks are going to have to live from the outside here this afternoon. Yet an offensive change for Bradley. Percy Hawkins has moved to the point. I still maintain that he's the guy they need to get into the game a little bit more. And the off, at the offensive end of the floor. Wes now tries to settle the offense a bit here. Wes from the outside over the zone connects. <laughs> Jim West now has six points in this first half of play, and Bradley leads by two. Earl Davis sets it up for West Texas. This time Bradley in that 2-3 look. They say they've got 19 defenses, 19 different defenses that they can throw at you on any given afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a bunch of defenses. However, I think, I think they're rule-oriented defenses. I think they get away with that. Jim West got a little physical and the foul is called and we're going to have a technical foul call. Coach Versace made a comment when he went by the official walking to the other end of the bench. The technical came immediately. There's no hesitation with the call on the technical. Here we see the foul by the way. We see it right there. Contact was made by Jim. He moved in. The foul was committed. Coach Versace came up off the bench and responded immediately. And the official put some air behind the whistle. We had a tee. Excellent free throw shooter at the line. Fred Johnson at 83.6%. Yeah, I like that term. Some air behind the whistle. Uh, I, I, knew, I knew you'd get after me. I shouldn't have said it. I take it back. <laughs> Johnson could tie the game right here. You just have to get used to your, uh, your terms once again. Uh, it's great to be back working with you. And good to be a part of this Missouri Valley Conference tournament. Now the feeling is mutual. There is Coach Gary Moss of West Texas State. His Bucks hanging in this game by a thread, and they have caught the Bradley Braves once again, this time at 17 apiece. We'll see if that technical foul does anything to pick up the pace or the tempo of this game as far as Bradley's concerned. Again, West Texas State working the perimeters. They're an undermanned team in this matchup, no question about it. Number one seeded Bradley, undefeated in conference play. The nation's longest winning streak at 20 games. The nation's best winning percentage at 29 and 1. The Bucks, meanwhile, have struggled a bit, 11 and 16 overall, 4 and 12 in conference games. They've lost 19 straight conference road games. Obviously, this one on a neutral site. Four ties of this first half here this afternoon. Singletary to snap the tie, and he does for the outside. 
Singletary with three for the field. He's got six points. They are not getting to him defensively. They're just too far away from him. The young man can shoot the basketball. Once they extend that defense, which eventually they'll have to do, apparently. And William Childs comes into play down low. Bradley resumes offensively. Bertolini in the corner trying to feed Trippy. The ball knocked out of bounds by Latus and last touch by West Texas State. Bradley coach Dick Versace talking with Rudy Keeler on his left. Trippy on the inbounds to Les. Now Jimmy Les fires from deep and it's short. Les on the follow for the rebound. And we've got a foul. Fred Johnson, the guilty party, number one on Johnson of West Texas State. That's the fourth on the team with 6.29 left to go in the first half of play. Good job by Les in terms of following the shot. A basic fundamental principle, but that's what wins basketball games. Battle Powell back into the lineup now. Here's the inbound. Hawkins off the glass. That's the guy that's got to get in the game. Right there. That may do it for him. We may look back on that as a very key play, maybe even a turning point. First two points of the game for Hersey Hawkins and Bradley. A tie of the count. Fifth tie of the first half. Gary Moss, the West Texas State coach, wants a timeout. Dick Versace gathers his team around him. We've got 6.16 left to go. First half of play. Game number one of the Valley Postseason Tournament. We'll be back after these messages on the SNI Television Network. Even though I'm just starting my career, it's not too early to plan for my retirement. That's why today, I invested in an IRA with the First National Bank of Peoria. This specialist showed me how to plan for a secure and dependable future and get a tax break right now. With my income, I'm glad I only have to deposit what I can afford. I'm working hard to get ahead in today's world, and the First National Bank of Peoria is working for my tomorrow. The First National Bank of Peoria. Member FDIC. The price, the service, the satisfaction at SK Chevrolet. When we say more for less, we mean it. At SK, we offer free service loaners with new car purchases, so you're never without a car when yours is in for service or repairs at SK. Get all the details on free service loaners at SK, your more car for less dollars dealer. SK Chevrolet, your more for less dealer, Knoxville and Pioneer Parkway, Peoria. Methodist has certainly grown a lot since our beginning in 1900. Today, we're a major medical center, bringing the latest technology to central Illinois, like the new spec scanner to help your doctor pinpoint problems and make diagnosis without the risk and expense of exploratory surgery. Advanced, efficient technology, from CT to linear accelerators, helping us to hold the line on hospital costs and continuing our tradition of care for you. National Car Rental, the official car rental agency for the Missouri Valley Conference television crew. We enjoy the national attention we get. I would recommend National Car Rental to you because you deserve national attention. West Texas State on the attack. Arthur Latis accepted the punishment from Jim Les, and Les picks up his second personal foul. Okay, now what happened is Bradley came out that time in a man-to-man -man defense, and once again we continue to see... Dick Versace constantly changing his defense, trying to disrupt the flow and the continuity of the West Texas State offense. Let's see if they stay that way right now. You want to try to pick those things up as quickly as you can. They are man-to-man. -man. Bradley switches to man-to-man -man defense. I think that will I think that will make a difference. William Childs up high now. There's Singletary. Earl Davis runs the cross from the point. Arthur Latis did one field goal and picked up a foul on Jimmy West. Childs penetrating, now the fade away. The rebound taken by Latis, knocked out of bounds by Arthur Latis. Went over the top of Jimmy West cleanly, but couldn't hang on to it. That good effort, real good effort by Latis. Only the second Missouri Valley team with a perfect conference seasonal record. Indiana State being the other one, of course, with Larry Bird. We're talking about the Bradley Braves. Donald Powell in the lane. Williams tried the tap, but it wasn't there. The rebound is back. Tapped and chased down by Singletary. Jerry Singletary hustling. Oh, you 
have to respect what it is West Texas State has done here for the first 15 minutes of this basketball game. We're tied at 19 apiece. Five minutes, just about five minutes left to go. First half. Earl Davis now with the up fake and the jumper. Williams has the rebound. The outlet to Les. Bradley applying the pressure, but the Buffs are back in a hurry. Good job of getting back defensively by West Texas State. Takes away the easy baskets from Bradley. Less from the side. Trimpy back tapped, and we've got a foul coming up. I believe it's going to be on Trevor. Nope, hang on. It's going to be on Trevor Trimpy. You're right. His second personal foul. That is six on the team now. West Texas State, it should be pointed out, only has four team fouls. Len Bertolini up off the bench reporting back on now for the Bradley Braves. West Texas State on the inbounds. There's Bertolini. Out of Chicago, Illinois. Four forty-five left to go. First half of play. This is Earl Davis, number 14 for West Texas State. Buff showing good movement away from the ball. Latest double teamed. Davis comes up with it. He's in some traffic. Singletary, the outlet man, who sets up the offense to Davis. You're watching West Texas State on the attack. They could take the lead of the field goal here. Childs down low. Latest on the turn. Hawkins had the rebound. Poked away by Fred Johnson to the foul is called. Team foul number five. It's the second on Johnson, and we get another look. We see the shot on the baseline. Here comes Johnson here, up over the top. You can see the foul. I don't know how many times you have to tell basketball players if you're going to be an offensive rebounder, you go baseline and you knife up inside. You power up inside. Quit going over the top. I'm not just talking about that young man. It's a rule, but when they get out there on the floor, the emotion takes over, and they just do not remember that. The last West Texas State score came with 7 2 left to go on the first half. Williams down low for Bradley. Score the field goal. And credit Trimpy with a very fine interior feed. Made it real easy. We see the pass from Hawkins on the point to Trimpy on the wing and a quick touch pass inside to Mike Williams who powers up. Arthur Latus picks up the personal foul on Latus, his first sixth on the team. Williams at the free throw line. Although he led the conference in field goal shooting, he only hits about 54% of his free throws, as I mentioned earlier, but he's right on the money there, and that three-point play gives Bradley a three-point lead. And three with, the lead, to go. with the lead, Wayne, they drop back into the zone again. And again, West Texas State has not scored since the seven-minute mark in his first half. No, and they did not score against the man-to-man -man defense either. Dick Versace says that man-to-man -man is the best defense Bradley plays. That's Singletary, no good. The rebound taken by Williams, the outlet to Jimmy Less. Less now sets it up from the point. There's Bertolini on the wing. Hawkins, top of the key, and loads and connects. Second from the field, he's got four. 3.10 left to go. Timeout called by West Texas State. We're first half of play. The Bradley Braves have taken a five-point lead, their largest to this first half of play. As you look at Dick Versace and his team, timeouts remaining four for Bradley, two for West Texas State. The Braves have won 12 games by four points or less, eight games by one or two points, and I guess a lot of that credence has to go to the guards. When you've got good guards, you can generally get it done down the stretch. Well, that's just an amazing statistic, and some of the things that have happened for them this year have, you know, have been incredible, but you do, you have to credit the guards. Number one, it starts with preparation on a daily basis in practice. Uh, it carries over so Certainly the game floor, you must execute. Let's see if we can listen in to Dick Versace here. Let's get a stop here on that odd number. Come on, stop it. Coach Moss sensing immediately that with three minutes and 11 seconds on the clock, his team might be drifting away from its game plan, and that happens sometimes when your confidence begins to grow. 
He calls the timeout immediately to set them down and make sure that they come down the floor and get a good shot. You can't always assure yourself that you're going to score. The objective offensively is to get good shots. Earl Davis setting up the offense. West Texas State now shooting just 36% from the floor. Pass inside a child. He picks up and has the presence of mind to put it off the back of the rim for two. That's a pretty good shot when you get it in that close. Here's Len Bertolini pushing it back in a hurry. Less the alley-oop. Hawkins! Boy, Bradley can big time you, can't they? I'll tell you what, they just big time you with a guy that's only six foot four. First of all, you gotta credit the pass. Great pass by Les. Great timing, great hands, great vertical jump by Hawkins. All ending up in a slam dunk. Six points for Hawkins, all of which have come in the last ten minutes. The block on the play by Hawkins by on off the shot by Latis. And now here is Les on the drive. The lead pass to Hawkins, and we've got a foul coming up. He's more into the game now. He had the two-hand dunk at the other end of the floor. He had the block here. He got out on the fast break and filled the lane. Les gave him another good pass. You're going to watch this play. Look at the pass by Les. Wow. Percy Hawkins. That was the play the last time down the floor. Great pair of hands. From a coaching standpoint, you really appreciate that kind of a thing. Sometimes from a fan standpoint, you don't you don't really understand what it means for a player to have good hands. To be able to take the ball out of the air, under control, and still do with it what he did with it. Earl Davis picked up his first personal foul of this play. And has seen Hawkins hit the first free throw and now the second to give Bradley their largest lead of the afternoon at seven points. 2-10 left to go, first half of play. Earl Davis, there's David Woods back into the ball game, number 24. Woods generally considered a good outside shooter for West Texas State. Singletary's done much of the outside shooting for the Buffs. And there's a little bit more concentration on him right now. They're not coming quite as far away from that young man, and understandably so. Davis works the ball quickly. Singletary frees up for a short jump and won't go. Williams, the rebound, the baseball feed ahead to Les. Les on the drive, dumps it off to Trippy. Len Bertolini on the weak side had the open jump for a moment, but Fred Johnson jumped at his face. Now Jim Les sets up the offense. The beauty of Bradley is that, yes, they can fast break, but it's not their only offense. They are certainly adept at being patient, looking for the right shot. And certainly have an ability to get it inside of Mike Williams. Jim Les, top of the key, he's open. Singletary tears loose the rebound, and the Buffs come back the other way with 65 seconds left to go in the first half. West Texas State trailing by seven. Buffs will stretch it for as long as they can. 30 to go now. The shot clock, less than a minute to go on the game clock, 54 seconds. They won't shoot this until inside 10 seconds. Singletary, it's almost like a stall right here now. Ten seconds on the game clock, on the shot clock that is, not the game clock. Now they'll look for the shot. Ten seconds left to go on the clock now. On the drive, Childs had it knocked away. Trimpy picks up to Hawkins. Jimmy West called for steps. Couldn't bring it down in time. He bobbled it as he got the pass right in the chest. And he knew it. We see the Bradley bench. There was no response at all. It was a good call by the official. Four turnovers now. For Bradley, into the ballgame, you saw Anthony Manuel, number 12 for the Bradley Braves. He is the point guard who will succeed Jimmy Les next year in Peoria. And they're very high on the young man. They really are. He not? played well against Indiana State last Thursday night. He played very well in the victory that clinched the undefeated season at Peoria. Undefeated conference season, I should say. Again, West Texas State, no shot clock now. We've got 18 to go in the first half of play. Seven-point lead for Bradley over the Buffs. West Texas State would like to claw back to within five right here. Now they'll go inside 10 seconds. Six seconds left. Here's Earl Davis firing from deep. The rebound, Williams, as time winds down to this first half of play. We've come to the halfway mark in game number one of the 10th annual Missouri Valley Conference postseason tournament. Dick Versace heads off the floor. His team owns a seven-point lead as we reach halftime. We'll be back after these messages from your local stations.
Doug Bell, 530 and 10 on 19 Eyewitness News. 19! The more you watch, the more you learn! Bradley University's academic reputation continues to grow. In its special November issue on America's Best Colleges, U.S. News and World Report magazine ranks Bradley fourth among the 151 comprehensive universities in the Midwest, Far West region of the nation. University presidents rated these institutions on the basis of strength of curriculum and quality of teaching. Earlier this fall, the widely read Peterson's Competitive Colleges Guide ranked Bradley as among the top 10% of institutions of higher education in America who are considered to be the most competitive in attracting top quality students. In still another rating service published by the New York Times, Bradley is one of the 5% of institutions listed as the best buys in college education. These and other similar publications are recognizing the fact that Bradley University has earned a reputation as a quality institution of higher education, which cares deeply about the development of each of its students. Years ago, a newsman was a newsman. He knew hard facts came from hard work. Bob Hetherington, he's that kind of newsman. He's paid his dues as a newspaper reporter, a television news writer, an editor in L.A., a reporter and anchorman in Colorado, and Peoria. Yeah, this Hetherington's been around all right. He knows the score. Bob Hetherington on 19 Eyewitness News at 5.30 and 10. The more you watch, the more you'll know. That's the story at halftime. Wayne Larravee with Bob Wardigo and Coach. You were a member of one of the uh, of the league when it was, of course, uh, uh, putting together the first Missouri Valley Conference tournament. Now this is the tenth, and this is the first time we've played all the games at a single site. Of course, as many of you know around the valley. But what do you think about it? I, I think it's great. Everybody's together in one place. Well, there's been a lot of discussion from the standpoint of, of getting together in terms of all the coaches and all the players. I like the one site. I think they have to take a good look in the spring and reevaluate what happens here in the next three days. It's, it's a little cheaper. You hope you can make more money, but maybe the first round games should be played at the site of one, two, three, and four as they finish in the conference and then bring them in to a site to play the semifinals and the finals. I think that remains to be seen, but you don't know if you don't try it. So let's see what happens when it's all over. All right, now let's take a look at this afternoon's first half. You, you, West Texas State hung in there. The 10 minute mark, it was tied. But down the stretch, the Bradley Braves, and you mentioned to me, in a conversation we had this morning, down the stretch, the last five minutes of each half, Mike would pretty much decide this ball game. Bradley held the upper hand down the stretch in the first half. Well, the reason I did mention that this morning uh, at breakfast is, is the fact that, you know, I'm just convinced that when you only have seven players, sooner or later that's going to catch up to you, and it normally catches up to you the last five minutes of each half. But with 7.02 on the clock in the first half, Bradley went to a man-to-man -man defense. At that point, broke any momentum that West Texas State had. From that point on, West Texas only scored one point. Now, even though Bradley went back to their matchup zone, that's not the point. The point is, what was it that broke their momentum? What was it that shook their confidence a little bit? It looked to me like it was the man-to-man -man defense and the three-point play by Mike Williams. And one other factor, I think, Wayne, you look at the stats, we don't have them yet, but when we look at them, let's see if offensive rebounds back for baskets. I think Bradley has dominated the offensive glass, their offensive glass, as compared with West Texas State, and they have more points off the offensive board. Okay, we're going to take a look at some of the action of the first half of play, specifically this pass. Now watch this from the baseline view. This is the Hersey Hawkins, Coach. Well, you talk about uh, the team of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference and the player of the year, Jimmy Les, you saw the great pass, but right behind Jimmy Les as player of the year was the guy that took that That's pass right. out of the air and made the dunk, Percy Hawkins. All right, the first half of play, again, it's a seven-point lead for the Bradley Braves, and if you take a look at West Texas State, what did they have to do? Do they have to return to the type of offense or the type of things they were doing in that first half early? I'm talking about the first half of the first half, so to speak. Without question, if they go away from their game plan and what they did the first 13 minutes, they're going to have problems. They, they can't play up and down a full court game with Bradley. They don't have enough personnel, and they're not as talented. I respect what they did in the first half. They must continue to do it for the next 20 minutes if they have any chance to win. Bradley leading at the intermission by seven, going for their 21st victory in a row. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station.
Broadcast journalism was founded on three principles, dedication, accuracy, and fairness. Terry Scott incorporates these principles into her reporting, but she also digs deeper. When Mitsubishi announced plans affecting the heart of Illinois, Terry Scott was there. She traveled to Pittsburgh to determine how that town rose to prosperity and how Peoria might do the same. Terry takes the time to discover how news affects people, people like you. What is important to you, turn to Terry Scott, weeknights at 5.30 and 10 on 19 Eyewitness News. Even though I'm just starting my career, it's not too early to plan for my retirement. That's why today, I invested in an IRA with the First National Bank of Peoria. Their specialist showed me how to plan for a secure and dependable future and get a tax break right now. With my income, I'm glad I only have to deposit what I can afford. I'm working hard to get ahead in today's world, and the First National Bank of Peoria is working for my tomorrow. The First National Bank of Peoria. Member FDIC. This Missouri Valley postseason tournament game is brought to you by... We're back at Tulsa, Oklahoma, seven point lead to the Bradley Braves. I do want to remind those of you looking in in Peoria that you'll be seeing also coming up the Illinois State Wichita State game immediately following this afternoon's Bradley game against West Texas State. Let's take a break right now and go back to our uh, central control and Mark Allen. Thank you very much, Wayne. We've got the bird's eye seat up here, Dr. Ron Kapursky and I do. We're in one of the sky boxes high overhead on one of the baselines. But as you've been mentioning throughout the first half, this really has been a special year for Bradley basketball. The longest winning streak in the nation, the best record in the nation, ranked solidly in every top 20 you'd care to look at. And joining me now at halftime to talk about uh, the year in review is Dr. Ron Kapursky, the faculty representative for the athletic department at Bradley University. Ron, welcome. Give me a feel for what this year has been like. Well, it's been euphoria. Is, is what it's been, Mark. It's been very exciting, and uh, a time when uh, you know when the national and international news is filled with uh, you know negative information and tragic events. You know, it's a pleasure to to be involved in something uh, you know that we're that we're doing here with this winning streak at Bradley. I mean, you know, it's difficult as you know there there are so many intangibles involved in uh, in something like a long winning streak, and how much this means to the community, and how much it means to the university specifically. But uh, but I'm sure that that we'll see the fruits down the line. You mentioned the international national. News as well as the local news. Things have been tough here lately in the, in the city of Peoria, and this has to be a real boost, not only for the morale in general of the community, but economically this has been a big boost. Well, I think I think that the business community, uh, you know, in Peoria specifically, and, and of course if this had happened in any other community, they would probably agree as well that, again, it's, uh, it's difficult to track and to get specific data on it now, but it certainly has to have a positive impact upon uh, how people feel, and, and, uh, and basically it's a psychological thing too and that is that that sounds like a cliche but people associate with things that are positive it's more fun to be associated with a winner than a loser and so it's uh, it's had a positive impact you know all across and tournament time is finally here for the Bradley Braves when you're having a season like you guys are having you really shoot for postseason play and it is finally here well Mark we were talking uh, you know before the game the two of us as, as, as the teams were warming up and it's very difficult to to predict exactly how you're going to do in the postseason tournament that is to say the NCAA tournament or even the NIT if a team's in that tournament because that's a fine tournament as well but um, you know there's so many variables involved in the NCAA selection committee process as um, diehard fans and sportscasters you know we, we think we have have the information on how a team gets uh, seated and how it gets assigned so I don't know where, where we're going and who we're playing and we're just going to have to wait and see but I think the attitude that, uh, that coach Dick Versace and his uh, and his marvelous coaching staff this year have, have instilled our players, and which, by the way, they're just more than just players. This is a team of, uh, of tremendous interpersonal relationships. I've traveled extensively with this team on the mainland and in the 
the tournament in Hawaii, and of course they were in Italy, you know, for the preseason thing. And, and uh, there's so many. Again, it sounds like a cliche, but there's so many intangibles that are involved. Uh, this is more than just a team; it's a group of uh, of uh, young men and, and individuals who have been molded into a you know a real supportive unit. And and those intangibles have carried us through you know a number of close uh, situations. And and we'll just take one game at a time. The most important thing in our minds right now is the second half of game number one in the tournament. Exactly. Okay, so an inside look for you there into what has been a very special year for Bradley basketball. And thank you, Dr. Ron Kapersky, for joining us here at Thanks for inviting me, Mark. All right, once again, our halftime score here, Bradley leading West Texas, 28-21. We'll take a timeout. Wayne and Bob are back with the stats and the second half right after this. I believe in working hard, reaching for your best. I believe in a soft drink, lot of Crystallite is my kind of soft drink. It's lighter, goes down easy, doesn't fill me up, and I love the taste. Crystallite Diet Soft Drink makes all these natural flavors with 100% NutraSweet. And only four calories. I believe in Crystallite, because I believe in me. Let's like a favorite chair, it feels so right. A cuddly bear to hold at night. Got me so bathroom tissue. Of course it isn't cotton, but it is cottony soft. Like a faded meat that doesn't fit, or slippers that are worn a bit. Cottony soft cotton is one of the comforts of all. What gives Slice that extra kick? Juice! We got the juice! We got the glass! We got the taste that no one has! We got the juice! We got the we got one spot in seven of this 10% fruit juices We got the juice, we got the burst Slice, slice, we turn the juice The queen of burst, so nice We got the juice Diet too Slice, slice for years, Howard Blevins used AT&T Long Distance. Will you accept the charges? And each month when he received his AT&T bill. Yes, operator. I'll accept the charges. He accepted the charges. But then Howard discovered Telesave. Now he gets a bigger charge from talking longer and saving more. And when he said, I've switched to Telesave, AT&T was shocked. Woo! Take charge of your long distance with Telesave. Halftime here in Tulsa, Wayne Larrabee with Bob Ortego. I want to remind you to try Beachwood's Restaurant for a fabulous all-you-can-eat lunch at Buffet served Monday through Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The buffet features an extensive fresh salad bar with over 20 toppings to choose from, not to mention fluffy omelets to order, a choice of two hot entrees and piping hot vegetables. Then to top off your luncheon, a sweet selection from our dessert counter. That's Beachwood's Restaurant, the Marriott Hotel. When you're in town, it's at 41st in Garnett here in Tulsa. Halftime statistics coach, if we can, there we go. Well, West Texas State only 33% from the floor. Bradley 12 out of 26, counters with a 46% field goal percentage. Three throws, West Texas three out of four, Bradley four out of six. Not a lot of fouls committed. 75% shooting from the line for the Buffaloes, 66.7 for the Braves. 14 rebounds for West Texas, 12 for Bradley. However, Bradley has the edge in offensive rebounds. One turnover for West Texas State, four turnovers for the Bradley Braves, and in the lane, in close to the hole, Four points for West Texas State and 15 for Bradley. That is a direct reflection of the shooting percentage. Singletary does lead West Texas at points, but he's only 3 of 10 from the field. Davis Johnson, uh, latest uh, follow, follow up uh, production wise. Johnson with two personal fouls along with uh, Woods for West Texas State. We'll get a look at the Bradley scoring. There it is. Hersey Hawkins came on, scored all of those points in the final 10 minutes of the first half of play on three of five shooting from the floor, two of two from the free throw line. Williams and Les right there. Les has two personal fouls. Trimpey has two. You can't really say that either side is in foul trouble as of yet. Well, excellent balance right there as we look at the Bradley individual scoring, but that's not unlike what's happened many, many times. Coach Versace there talking to his team, getting ready for the second half. Offensive rebounds, we talked about this earlier, 5-1 to one in favor of Bradley, resulting in six points for the Braves and only two points for West Texas State. Both teams back on the floor now. 
Being set to inbound the basketball for West Texas State. David Woods, the junior from Mesquite, Texas. Second half starting lineups. West Texas really has forced to play with three forwards and two guards in their lineup. Orlando Graham off the team for disciplinary reasons about the 20th of February, and they've been going with seven players since then. Buff start on the attack. West Texas State trailing by seven as we get underway in the second half. I'm of the opinion, Wayne, that they really need a basket here. Hawkins made that happen and disturbed the offensive flow for West Texas State. It'll belong to the Buffs on the out-of-bounds play. Good play by Hawkins in terms of anticipation. I think if West Texas State does not score with this possession and Bradley come down, comes down and counters it with a two-pointer, it'll have a big effect on, on the ebb and flow of the second half. That'll hurt him. Hawkins on the steal. Hawkins to the hoop. Ten points now for Hersey Hawkins, and the lead is nine for Bradley, largest lead of the game. You talk about good athletic skills. You saw great balance that time. Good body balance. He was bumped in the air and still shot the ball very softly. Singletary with his first shot of the second half, and Williams off the board. Jim Les pushes it up in a hurry. Bradley leads by nine. They can hit double digits as far as a lead would go for the first time this afternoon. That first possession for West Texas State as a result of the way that first half ended, I thought was just crucial. Donald Powell cutting across the lane, had room. No foul called. Fred Johnson comes back with it. William Childs in the corner, takes it back out front. Now Singletary. That's Earl Davis up high. David Woods on the perimeter. Singletary not afraid to shoot, makes a good move around Powell and hits on the floater. Just an excellent Good one-on-one -on -one basketball. Eight points now for Singletary. Seven-point lead for the Bradley Braves. Almost two minutes into the second half of play. First game of the postseason tournament. This is the first year the Valley has taken all of their teams, all eight, to one side. Williams knocks the ball out of bounds. It'll belong to West Texas State. I think there'll be a lot of discussion, but I, you know, as a fan, it's a thrill just to be here, to see everybody together, all eight teams that made it here. And, of course, there's one other team in the Missouri Valley Conference that is not here, and that's Southern Illinois. And they'll be in the postseason event next year. West Texas State on the attack, working the ball. Now Woods from the outside. Williams again up high for the rebound. He's hit double digits in rebounds now. The pass ahead to Trippy, try to back pass to Donald Powell, trying to chase it down. He can't. Earl Davis finally corralled for West Texas State. Buffs are trailing by seven. Five turnovers now for the Bradley Braves. Again, the Bucks working that perimeter game. Does Earl Davis have to penetrate the way they're working the ball? Well, against, against the two-guard front, you would like for your point guard to penetrate because he can split those two people and you're playing four on three. They have not tried to do that a lot. Against the one-guard front matchup zone that Bradley plays, penetration I do not think takes on the same importance. Singletary makes it a five-point game. Don Low Williams on the way to the bucket is fouled. What you want to do against the, the one-guard front is try to play two people out front, so you're playing two-on-one, -on -one, getting your shots in the area of 15 to 18 feet. First personal foul called in the second half. Earl Davis picking up his second, as you saw on the screen. The inbounds to Williams in close once again. This time it won't go, but it's back tap to Trimpy. Donald Powell sets it up now to Jim Les. Trimpy baseline, Williams inside, muscling for two. Good control. He was triple teamed down there. They dropped down at the point of the ball well. He just went up over the top. Massive Mike has eight points. West Texas State resumes. Childs in close. But Johnson flies it loose in traffic. Singletary sets it back to the point in Davis. The Buffs reload their offense. This is David Woods. Pass tipped by Les. Loose on the floor. Picked up by Fred Johnson, who's given the open pop. So West Texas State hanging to within five as West pushes it back in a hurry for the Bradley Braves. They'll give Trippy the outside shot, although once in a while he'll take it and burn you. Good play made by Fred Johnson to pry it loose. Singletary with a two on one. Les is back. Singletary on the drive. We got a foul on Jimmy Les, and it's his third. 
And it's early for that to be the third foul on Jimmy Les. Rudy Keeling to the left of Dick Versace, looking up at the clock, and Dick glancing down his bench now. Watch it again, Coach. Here's the offensive pressure applied by Singletary. Contact there. The foul was called. They said he was on his arm. I didn't, I didn't see all the contact. I didn't too. either, no. Nonetheless, it'll go as number three on Jim Les. First personal foul of the second half. Uh, first team foul, I should say, against Bradley. Of course, we didn't see it, Wayne, but we're, we're getting older. You know, no, we're five years wearing ago, glasses now. Five years, and you didn't have to say that. <laughs> now everybody in Peoria knows I'm wearing glasses. You turkey. That's new this year. A new addition this year. <laughs> 11 points now for Singletary. West Texas State back to within four, and he can make it a three-point game right here. Jerry Singletary. So Singletary rings two on the two free throws. Bradley moments ago at a nine-point lead. Now Jim Les sets the offense. Hawkins up high. Les can feel it from the wing. Grimpy's down low looking for Williams. Les from the outside. Yes. You could anticipate that the shot was going to come right there, but they, because they continued to run Davis back and forth between the baseline man and the wingman, and he can't cover both of them. 15, 28 left to go. Eight points now for Jimmy Less. Second half of play. Bradley on top. Game number one of the Missouri Valley Conference postseason tournament. William Childs at the baseline. Hawkins looking for a steal out front. He anticipates so well. West Texas showing good ball movement at the moment. Well, you've really got to snap your passes against Bradley. No lazy passes against that team, even when they are in his own. Earl Davis setting it up. Six seconds left to go on the shot clock. Singletary won't get a shot away. There's Hawk tied up on the floor. Jump ball indication made, and the buzzer sounds. Ball will belong to the Bradley Braves. We've got a break of the action with 14.53 left to go. Second half of play. The Bradley Braves owning a five-point lead as they assemble around head coach Dick Versace. This is the SNI Television Network. People have trust in her. It has helped secure the future for many and helped others to start over again. For countless families, it is shelter from the unexpected because they know it will be there when they need it most. It stands for affordable protection and service for your life, health, home, and car. It's the symbol of a strong, growing company and its family of agents. It's the shield of shelter insurance, where personal service will always be a matter of personal pride. I'm C.L. Strickland, Central Illinois' newest Nissan dealer. Thanks to you, in just three months, I've become the volume dealer in Nissan sales. And there's got to be a reason. Well, the reason is inventory. The more we sell, the more we get. We've got 100 on hand and more on the way. And all of them at 7.9 for 48 months. We've sold more Nissans in Springfield, Peoria, Decatur, or Champaign, and we're going to keep right on doing it. So come see us at Strickland Nissan in Bloomington. It's worth the drive from anywhere. This health message could change your life. Do you suffer from neck pain, headaches, blurred vision, shoulder pain, arm pain, numb hands, back pain, hip pain, pain down the legs? If you have any of these symptoms, call the Shelley Chiropractic Office. We'll accept your insurance assignment, which means we'll wait for payment until your insurance check comes in. Remember, if you wear out your body, where are you going to live? Call Dr. Shelley today at 682-6624. It could change your life. here at the Missouri Valley Conference postseason tournament. That second bracket, Illinois State, Wichita State. Those of you looking in in Peoria will see that game immediately following this one. Then, of course, the evening session, Drake Creighton, Tulsa, Indiana State. Back to live action. It's going to be a fun day of basketball, and we get to do them all, Wayne. That's right. We'll be here for it all. Hawkins from the baseline. Bradley comes out of the timeout firing. Percy Hawkins now with 12 points. Bradley in the 2-3 zone. Hawkins moves in the back now because of Bertolini being in the ball game. He plays up front on his own. David Woods comes up short. Les gets the long rebound. Here it is ahead to Bertolini. Two on two break. Bertolini in the lane. Nicely done. Good body control. He made a good move inside with a crossover dribble. Glenn Bertolini off the bench with four points so far this afternoon. This is Earl Davis. This equals the largest lead of the afternoon for the Bradley Braves. Nine points. 
Davis trying to penetrate. Singletary for the outside and loads from the parking lot and connects. Jim Les quickly back the other way. Singletary's got 14. He almost single-handedly is keeping the buffs in this game. Boy, he has shot the ball just so well outside. Hawkins again. Baseline giving the open pop. The rebound back tap taken by David Woods. Well, the Buffs trying to score four unanswered points to get back into this game. Trying to close within five with a field goal right here. Singletary again. Yes! You know, Wayne, they may want to consider, they may want to consider going a little box and one or diamond and one on that young man. I'd like to know what he's shooting in the second half. He was three of ten at halftime. Hawkins top of the key. Less on the wing. They work it to Bertolini. He's got an outside shot. William Childs up high for the rebound, and here come the Buffs. David Wood sets it up now as West Texas reloads the offense. Buffs will work the clock here. Davis trying to penetrate once again. Singletary on the wing. Well, when they've got two out front there to take on Davis, he can't really penetrate, can he, Coach? No, he can't, but Les has got to be careful out there with those three fouls. Singletary almost made it three in a row. The rebound batted, and Hawkins went up high to get it. Jim Les with a two-on-two -two break, and the Buffs are back in plenty of time. Les now fakes the shot and deals to the corner. Jim Les at the point, reloads the offense. Bradley leading by five. West Texas State really packing it down in, and they still are able to get the ball into the big guy. Williams on a nifty finger roll down low. Mike Williams now with double digits, ten points. Bradley again by seven. 12-18 left to go. David Woods on the perimeter. William Childs operates on Williams. Had the shot blocked in a foul. Mike Williams guilty of the foul. That is only his first. Just the second on the team in the second half. It's a credit for that young man to play as much as he's played here. He hasn't been out of the basketball game. Playing inside around the basket has only one foul. Let's see if he got him with the body. Looked like the block itself was clean. There you nope. see the pass inside. He hacked him yeah. on the wrist. Yeah. He sure did. You'd make a good official. Well, I got to see it again. Especially now that you're, <laughs> <laughs> now that you're wearing glasses. That's right. Hey, help. First one is good by Childs. He's got another coming up. Six-point ball game. He can make it a five. And he does. Four points for William Childs. They've got to get him more involved, Coach. Well, they'll have to do it inside. He's very definitely an inside player. And they really haven't been able to get the ball inside against Bradley. No, they haven't. Hawkins for the outside. Childs keeps it alive and garners the rebound. This is Singletary, and that's Davis. Number 14 is sets the offense. Good job once again by West Texas State. Fred Johnson takes a rare shot and connects. It's a three-point game in favor of Bradley. And as one might expect, the crowd is siding with the underdog, West Texas State Buffalo. Always happens like that on a neutral court, although there's a large contingent for Peoria. Trying to force it down low is less, and the pass is picked off. Now they tie up Davis. Along the West Texas State. The alternating process gives the ball to West Texas State. Bradley had the last one. West Texas gets this one. The Braves will get the next one. What a job that man is doing. Gary Moss keeping his buffs in this ball game. Well, you know they're tough as nails down in Amarillo, but on a neutral court, they're also difficult to play. Well, they've done just really a good job. They need to continue to execute their game plan, though. They cannot afford to go away from that game plan. Moss is 3-4 and four in his two-year career. West Texas State in tournament games at holiday tournaments and postseason tournaments. There's a good shot. That's a good job. Right Johnson there. hits his second in a row, and suddenly it's a one-point ball game. Ten points for Fred Johnson. You can never put a value on the human element when you play basketball. I'll tell you, and you're seeing it here today. No question about how good Bradley is. Less to quiet the crowd, and he does. We just can't say enough about, about the performance of West Texas State. Three-point lead now for the Bradley Braves. This is David Woods. Singletary up high. Again, David Woods. Quickly, they get it to Johnson. Three in a row. No. Rebound back tap by Les. Len Bertolini on the run. Does not have the numbers in his favor. So the Braves set it up. This is Les, number 15. See, the good teams always answer the challenge, and that's what Bradley did with the last ball possession. Les for two in a row, yes. Boy, you must have, you called it before he even shot it. Radar, we're going to start calling you Radar. Yeah, right. Coming up 
halfway through the second half of play. Les has 12 points, by the way, today. Once again, they answered the challenge. William Childs inside, which is where he's going to have to score, but he draws the foul on this play. Mike Williams picks up his second personal foul. I believe that's three on the team now. Coach Perseus is talking to Williams. He wanted him on the low side. What he means by that is the baseline side. You do not want to be on the high side of a pivot man and play defense. The high side is the side toward the free throw line. You want to get on the low side because you get help from your other teammates on the high side. If you play high, you don't get any help on the low side. Greg Jones in the ball game for Mike Williams. William Childs at the line, two of two of the free throw stripe today. He is a senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Playing before the hometown crowd. Childs makes good on his first. Childs averaged 12.2 points per game, 6.7 rebounds, shot 68% from the line. Childs sinks a pair. The game is three points in favor of the Bradley Braves. Gary Moss out on the floor congratulating his team as we reach another timeout. 9.59 left to be played. Bradley holding the upper hand, but not by much. Back after these messages, this is the SNI Television Network. They all play an important role in protecting your valuables against fire. But if a fire should strike, they'll burn too. That's why you need a Mylink insulated safe for superior fire protection of wills, stocks, jewelry, and other keepsakes and valuables. If fire hits your home, gather your family and get out. Leave what's left to Mylink. Buy Mylink fire files and safes at Whitmer One Stop Office Marts in Peoria and Bloomington. Hey, Mr. Versace, want some kitchen cooked potato chips? Nah, no thanks, kid. But they're the greatest, Mr. Versace, just like your team. Hey, you're all right, kid. Thanks, coach. Kitchen cooked potato chips are kettle cooked for a hearty potato flavor the whole family will enjoy. And I wouldn't do this commercial if I didn't eat kitchen cooked potato chips. They're the greatest. Kitchen cooked potato chips and snacks, available at your grocers. Deluxe Homes is having its biggest RV sale ever. Every used RV on the lot is going in rock bottom places. And we're closing out many of the best names in motorhomes. Holiday Rambler, Rainbow, Midas, RVC Legend, and more. None of these models will be restocked. New and used motorhomes and travel trailers must go. Buy now while every vehicle is discounted thousands of dollars to wholesale and below. We're Central Illinois' largest Winnebago motorhome dealer. So see me, Bill Butler, the man with the cigar, and save thousands at Deluxe Homes in Peoria. National Car Rental is the official car rental agency for our Missouri Valley television crew. We enjoy the national attention we get. I would recommend National Car Rental to you because you deserve national attention. Look at what they're doing from the floor as compared to season percentages. Bradley on the attack, working the basketball. Hawkins on the weak side. Less up high. Long rebound, back tap by Bertolini and Ron Spittler. Bertolini went up to knock that ball back out to West. It was called for a foul. He batted the ball out with his right hand. I think the, the official anticipated that he shoved the West Texas player in the back with his left hand. We got the big guy, Mike Williams, back in the game, Wayne. West Texas State resumes offensively. Davis trying to make something happen to Singletary. Can't get the shooter's touch on it. Big Greg Jones garners the rebound. Jimmy Les in transition quickly, and again the Buffs get back to stop the fast break. Hawkins in the corner, back to Les out front. Inside Williams, nicely done. Excellent pass because it was away from the defensive man. It enabled Williams to wheel to the basket without that defensive pressure because Les passed it in the right place. Williams Passing. has 12 of the 46 Bradley points. They lead by five. West Texas State working the ball once again. This is David Woods. The rebound batted from behind by Fred Johnson to the foul is called. Johnson picks it up. That's his third. Now we'll see down the stretch here, Wayne, if what happened in the first half happens again here in the second half when we were talking about the last five to eight minutes. There's a look from our baseline camera right there. There's the shot by Woods, which is long. Off the other side, the foul call. Percy Hawkins with the inside position. Back live, this is Jimmy Less running the offense for the Bradley Braves. Len Bertolini, they want to go inside again. A lot of muscle in that Bradley lineup of Williams and Jones. Now massive Mike inside. Yes, it comes off the glass. And he's fouled. Bradley did a good job that time of clearing away any defensive help from the opposite. 
up inside and creating that one-on-one -on -one situation inside for Williams. And it's really hard to handle him in there. You see it. He uses his body well, gets the man on his hip, the pass is away from the defensive man as it should be. He is able to take it in stride to the basket. The foul is the fourth on Fred Johnson, third on the team, and Williams at the line seeking a three-point play. Take a look at the foul trouble. West Texas State, Johnson with four. Bradley, Jimmy Less has three. And you can bet that Gary Moss would like to get Less out of the game, but Less is just a smart player. He's not going to commit any silly fouls or take any chances at this point. Bertolini was out of bounds when he finally garnered control. He had come back in from being out of bounds. You can't do that. Right, good call by Ron Spittler. West Texas State resumes. Again, they're trailing now by seven. Bradley in the 2-3 zone. Singleton. Boy, they're coming out to get him now, aren't they? Now yeah, they're trying to put a little pressure on that wing when the ball goes down there. You see it right there by trapping just a little bit. What does West Texas have to go to Childs in that case at the baseline? Or? No, against that two-guard front, you want to look for the penetration. There's a little penetration right there, and that's what you want to get. Good, good ball move play. by Childs off the glass. Oh, my goodness. Created by the good ball fake. Show the ball. Don't just move your head. Raise your chin. you got to show the basketball. Make it look like you're going to shoot it. He did that. The defensive man moved, and he made the penetration. The Bradley lead is five. Here's Hawkins, and it's short. Now the Buffs on the run. They've got some numbers. Singletary from Davis. And Singletary pulls it back out. Much to the delight of his head coach, Gary Moss. Buffs again looking for the shot, trying to work the ball. And Davis from the outside and rattles out. Hawkins the rebound. Less in transition for the Bradley Braves. Boy, Les dribbles so well in traffic. You know, one of the things you have to mention about Les does not get mentioned enough. He doesn't make many bad decisions on the floor. Williams double team. Davis knocked it away, and it'll belong to West Texas State. Last touch by Bradley. When you're playing the point guard position, and you, you end up with a guy that doesn't make many bad decisions, it has such an effect on your whole game, and, and he's like that. Eight turnovers now for the Bradley Braves. 7-12 left to go in the game. Bradley leading by five. Boy, West Texas State has hung in there today. They trailed by nine on a couple of occasions here in the second half. They trailed by seven at the half. Arthur Latus, number 30, into the ball game now for West Texas State. Latus and Childs are the people down low. Now Latus comes to a high post. Buffs have just all but stalled the ball right now. They'll run the clock down inside 10 seconds and then try to get a shot. 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. Singletary has the shot from the outside. Or the young man has played so well in the second half. Yes, indeed. 18 points now. Bertolini in the corner. Jimmy Less over to Hersey Hawkins. Less unloads over Woods. Singletary up high for the rebound. And the Bucks who trail by three could close within one. Gary Moss said it yesterday. Someone asked him, well, what about the field against Bradley in this tournament? He said, well, we feel we have a chance. We're the eighth seed. So that must mean everybody's got a chance at it. I'll tell you what, when the conference season is over, I mean, it's a new season. You start all over. I've been through it at the high school level. In fact, the, the Pekin High School, where we won a state championship in 67 with Dottie Hawkins leading the way. But it, when you get into tournaments, you got to put whatever's happened behind you. It, you. You just start it all over. You see, I think this is the West Texas State's advantage right here. Singletary is 5 of 8 from the field in the second half. They'll stay as close as they can, as long as they can. Davis can hit from the outside. I should say David Woods from the outside. West Texas State trails by just one. Coach Versace wants a timeout. It will be for a defensive change. I'd be willing to bet you. Five minutes and 33 seconds left to go. The Bradley lead has shrunk from 9 to 1. The delighted West Texas State Buffaloes take a time out there. The Bradley Braves, the tournament favorite. We'll be back after these messages. This is the SNI Television Network. You know, when most folks think of an IRA account, they look pretty much like I do. But that's not right, because an IRA account's not just a retirement account. It's a tax-saving account. And you should be thinking of opening your Sheridan Bank IRA when you look like this. You see, the more you save, the less you pay in taxes, and that's good news come refund time. There's no better time than now to open your Sheridan Bank IRA account at the one-of-a-kind bank, because you're one-of-a-kind. 
It's happening all over. More and more people are choosing Sprite over 7-Up. Attention all students, it's Wednesday, so don't forget Miss Monaghan's Drama Club. Remember, Saturday's the big Dover Heights game. Oh yes, since more and more of you are drinking Sprite instead of 7-Up, we've put Sprite in all the machines. Way to go. Move over, 7-Up. Sprite's great lime and taste is winning people over. Great lime and taste makes it Sprite. On the 18th of March, I'm going to vote for Bob Madigan for Senate. He's a big plus in this area. He lived here all of his life. He grew up right south of Lincoln. He was captain of the Milligan football team. He got out of college and he stayed here and dedicated himself to helping people. Bob Madigan will do the same kind of job for us in the state Senate that he'd been doing for a long time. Bob Madigan, state Senate, common sense, character. Vote for Bob Madigan on March 18th. Lunch at Beachwood's, the best buy in Tulsa. Beachwood's restaurant at the Tulsa Marriott Hotel. Sunday brunch every Sunday from 10 to 2 p.m. Bradley resumes offensively. Bradley has scored in three minutes and four seconds. Braves looking for a good shot, and Mike Williams has called for his third personal foul away from the ball. They're trying to create the one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Williams on the other side of the floor that we saw earlier in the game. Williams used his body a little bit more than the official thought he should. Watch it left out of your screen. Right, you yep. see Williams right there. Five team fouls on the Bradley Braves, only three on West Texas State. Here's the defensive change I talked about at the timeout. I think it's a good move by Coach Versace. He's got to call the pitch, though. Offense makes that uh, foul coming up on Greg Jones. That's his fourth foul. It could be very, very crucial. There's five. in the first half that Dick Versace feels Bradley's best defense is the man-to-man, -man, although they play a lot of combination zones. They're in the man-to-man -man right now. Bradley leading by a point here. Now 4.40 left to go. Our third latest operating baseline. David Woods. William Childs here. Singletary. Crimpy had the rebound for a moment. Kept alive by David Woods. Crimpy comes up with it and an over-anxious Buffalo trying to knock the ball away. Earl Davis picks up the foul. Wayne we had a little bit more pressure on Singletary that time with a man-to-man -man defense because that man is, is not coming away quite as far in that defense as he would come away in his own defense. And Bradley's got the ball back, and, and I really believe that that will be a key to the outcome of this game. Third personal foul on the play. Fourth on the team. Third on Earl Davis. Fred Johnson's back into the ballgame with four personal fouls for West Texas and down low Mike Williams again. Versace right now is called the zone. He has. There it is. Uh, back in the matchup. The reason for it, I'm sure, is to protect Jim West. West Texas State will work the clock. Real chess game going on out there. Hawks now trail by three. 350 left to go. Hey, the Bradley fans that are here, you can see them over there across the way. They are concerned. Yeah, they're standing. They have every right to be concerned. Single Terry. Now Earl Davis, number 14, Singletary from deep, and it runs the bucket. Williams has the rebound. Here come the Braves on the run. Jim Les pulls the air a bit out of the basketball as he sets up the offense. This is a big one here for Bradley. Big ball possession. Robert Crimpy, Greg Jones, Mike Williams down low. Here's the alley-oop to Hersey Hawkins, and a foul is called. A foul coming up on Earl Davis, and it would be his fourth. Davis got in front of it and knocked it away. His fourth personal foul, the fifth on the team, and watch it again. Bradley Bench wants that to be a two-shot foul. I disagree. I do not think the control was maintained right there. We saw the lob pass to Hawkins. I think it's a good call by the official. I really do. You have to have control in order to be defined as a shot attempt. Take a look at the foul trouble now, Johnson and Davis. And again, West Texas plays with basically they use six players. They have seven on the roster. Nick Versace 
talking it over with the official. Trevor Trippy triggering baseline. There's Jimmy Les. Bradley leading by three. One thing about the Braves, they do not panic in tight games. They've been in a bunch of them. Jones down low, hard off the glass. Good job. That's a big basket. Well, I tell you, you've got to admire the way Bradley responds in the tight ball game down the stretch. And they now built a five-point lead. First two points of the game for Greg Jones. Jones bats the ball into the air. Williams takes it down. Now Mike Williams gives it up to Trimpy, and Jimmy Les will take it across. Four turnovers now for the Bucks. Five-point lead for BU with 2.40 left to go. You don't get to be 29-1 and one and not able to handle yourself in a tight situation down the stretch. Even in a somewhat odd situation on a neutral court, first round of the tournament and an afternoon game during the week. That's just a strange situation to be in. You bet it is. We talked about that at the top of the show, and you need to be careful with situations like that. Here's the beat from Lester Williams down low. How do they see it? Blocking foul against West Texas State. Jerry Singletary did not have possession. His second personal foul. Now that is six on the team, so the team fouls are even with 2.17 left to go. Singletary did not get there in time. He tried to, but he did not get there in time. Les looking it over on the inbound took a long time. Williams clears over to Hawkins, and Jimmy Les reloads the offense. Bradley Braves will take some time off the clock now. Coming up on the two-minute mark left to be played. Percy Hawkins and Jim Les playing catch. Plenty of time on the shot clock. A minute 59 left to go on the game clock. Now West Texas comes out to challenge. David Woods out to watch Jimmy Les. Hawkins very nearly lost it. Les. Back door. Williams for the slam in impressive fashion. And he almost tore it down. That would have held up the game. Great communication by Les and Williams. Two, less than two minutes to go. About a minute 30 remaining to be played. Fred Johnson trying to force it inside. The ball batted right back to Johnson. Earl Davis. David Woods from the outside, and he's got two. Minute 19 left to go. Timeout called on the floor by West Texas State. Minute 19 to go as you look at the buffs huddle around Coach Gary Moss. He's done an outstanding job, but these guys, the Bradley Braves, have a five-point lead as we head down the stretch. This is the SNI Television Network. For nine months now, I've been looking for furniture. Then I looked in the trading post. Oh, this is one of 10,000 classified stories each week in Trading Post. At United Federal, we have an everybody IRA for you. Whatever your needs, we'll meet them. For a higher rate of return, our tax-deferred annuity IRA earns 9.5% interest guaranteed. Or if you want a low minimum investment, open our variable rate IRA for as little as $100, or lock in a fixed rate IRA with only $500. Almost everyone can save with United Federal IRA. Open an everybody IRA today and save on your taxes. How do you vote for a write-in candidate? When you step into the voter's booth, find the write-in space on the ballot stub or envelope. Write or print the title of the office, the name of the candidate, and put an X in the box to the left of the name. That's it. Complete the ballot and hand it to the election judge as you leave. Bob Ortigo back in Tulsa, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. A lot of the Bradley faithful made it. And they've been hurt from today. And they've been a bit of a factor down the stretch, giving Bradley a little feeling of home cooking. Timeouts remaining quickly. Uh, Bradley has all has three of theirs, three out of four, and West Texas down to one. West Texas State goes to full court man-to-man -man defense, as you might expect. They have to do that. They're going to have to foul here, too. Hawkins is fouled on the play by Singletary. Three on Jerry Singletary. Greg Jones comes back into the ball game. Third personal on Singletary. Now the uh, vis now the uh, team is over the limit. I was going to say the visitors. They in fact are wearing the visiting uniforms, but everybody but Tulsa is a visitor to this one, <laughs> this tournament. Hawkins at the free throw line. Twelve points. He's two of two at the charity strike. He had a situation substitution there with Bertolini now out of the game and Jones in. Jones in for rebounding and to play the zone at the other end of the floor and for rebounding. If they get the ball back and it's a, a dead ball situation, Bertolini will come back because they'll want him in the game because of his free throw shooting abilities. Hawkins nails a pair at the line. 
and the Bradley lead grows to seven. 66 seconds left to go. There's the game clock lower right-hand corner of your screen. From the outside, the pop shot won't go for Singletary. Hawkins and Williams cannot control on the rebound. It'll belong to West Texas State. Singletary triggering on the inbounds for West Texas State. Hawkins takes it away. Fine defensive play by Hersey Hawkins. Good turnover by West Texas State. Singletary fouls West as he comes out of the backcourt. Number four on Jerry Singletary. Well, he's really played a good basketball game. Especially in the second half, Coach, when he came out of the first ten minutes at five out of eight from the floor. So Jim Les to the free throw line. 12 points for Les here this afternoon, his first trip to the charity strike. Les, a good free throw shoot, about 75%, averaging 14 points, 3.5 rebounds per game. In addition to leading the Valley in assists with about eight per contest. Once again, Bradley responds in a difficult situation inside five minutes. Singletary from deep. Singletary drains the J and a timeout called again by West Texas State. The final timeout for the Buffs here in what very well could be their final game in Missouri Valley Conference competition. But we'll be able to look back at this one. They gave the nation's top 10 team, the Bradley Braves. They gave them all they could handle in this first round of the tournament. Bradley now pulling away to a seven-point lead with 44 seconds left to be played. There's Dick Versace. So needless to say, what a job he has done this season. Well, he's the coach of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, you know, we talk so much about the chemistry on this team. Dick Versace brought up an interesting point that not a lot of credence has been paid to, and that is that really the feeling began after they lost to the NIT and got handled pretty well up in Milwaukee against Marquette. We talked about that uh, yesterday with, with Mort Tanner, Wayne, when we had an opportunity to visit with him. And, you know, you heard a lot about the trip to Italy being the catalyst for this basketball team and bringing them together for this great season that they've had here. But Coach Versace talked a little bit more about what took place in the locker room following the loss in the NIT tournament last year in Milwaukee to Marquette. That's really when he started it. And Boise Winters, a young man who's not here now, who was a great player for Bradley for four years, had an impact on that. I guess that there was something that took place in there. There was some commitment that was made. And certainly it's been followed up on. And you're looking at a team right there and a coach that has won 30 games. And I'm here to tell you, that's just a lot of wins. And what a great, great season. And it's not only been great for Bradley, but it's brought the Missouri Valley Conference a lot of national recognition, too. And it looks like they're, they're going to get that 30th victory with only 44 seconds on the clock and a seven-point lead. But I'll tell you, I've seen crazier things happen. So let's not put it in the win column yet. Trevor Trempe will trigger on the inbounds. Jimmy Less. But they have to foul Less. He is uh, bullseye at the free throw line for the most part. Earl Davis guards him. Bertolini is gladly trying to work the clock now. No shot clock. We're down to 30 seconds remaining. Trimpy clears to Hawkins. Here he goes. Yes, it counts. Well, it's the old-fashioned backdoor play. This play's been around as long as the sport of basketball has. You hit the opposite forward flashing eye, and you bust the wingman to the basket. Hawkins does it with authority. Look at him go up here. He's the one with the great vertical jump out of Chicago. Fantastic move. Good, basic, fundamental basketball there. William Childs guilty of the foul for Childs, his first. Team is over the limit. Hawkins at the line, four of four from there. 16 points overall this afternoon. I do not think the final score of this game is going to be indicative of the fine performance by West Texas State. Hawkins completes the three-point play. The lead is 10, and that's the largest lead of the afternoon for Bradley. No timeouts remaining for the Buffs. They've got to get a shot in a hurry. Penetration made by Earl Davis. Fred Johnson glasses it home. 13 seconds left to go here for long lead pass to Greg Jones. He has to save, and it saves to Singletary. To Earl Davis, seven seconds left to go. Davis, David Woods from the wing. He connects with three seconds to go. The inbound to Jimmy Les, and that is it. The Bradley Braves have won 21 games in a row. They are now 30-1 and one on the season, 17-0 in Missouri Valley play this season. 
the final score, the Bradley Braves 61, the West Texas State Buffaloes 55. I'll tell you something, Bob Ortigo, we mentioned it, coming down the stretch, when West Texas State closed within a point, you couldn't help but get caught up in what this undermanned team was doing, making the run at one of the nation's top ten teams. However, the Bradley Braves have had runs made at them before, and they showed they can take a punch and come back and get the win. Well, they've done that all year long, and they handled it extremely well here this afternoon, and I'd have to say something again about that switch to the man-to-man -man defense. They didn't do it very long. In fact, only one series, but they broke Singletary's momentum. He had he had hit consecutive shots outside when Bradley made that move defensively. Uh, he missed the next shot that he took. Bradley countered at the other end with a basket, and from there on, was on their way to you know to their 30th victory. So it's it's just a, a, a tremendous basketball team that seems to respond to whatever challenge comes their way. Again, we we'll remind you that coming up uh, in Peoria on WHOI, you're going to be seeing Illinois State of Wichita State, and we're going to be right back to talk with Dick Versace of the Bradley Braves after these messages. And again, Bradley wins their 30th of the season, the final score 61-55 over West Texas State. Back after these messages from your local stations. Here's Max and Pam. The best for less. Pam, we just got to tell everyone about Hamptons. Their stores are really fantastic. Tell me about it. Beautiful cabinets. Plus top quality appliances like Maytag, GE, KitchenAid, and Gen Air. All at discount prices. No wonder they're growing. Sure. Hamptons give people better quality and better service at a better price. And they're nice the people. Best for less. Every, every day. On the next MASH. Do you realize there are millions of people in Asia with no food? And I'm one of them. Hot Lips and the 4077 play host to the immortal Howitzer Al Houlihan. My father is coming to visit day after tomorrow. Uh, While a grateful patient makes Hawkeye a meaty offer. I work in food requisitions and disbursements. Ah, the Department of Cruel and Unusual Nourishment. How'd you like some steak? It's very rare comedy on MASH. Monday night at 1030 on TV19. How do you vote for a write-in candidate? It's easy. When you step into the voter's booth, read the post and instructions, as well as those on your ballot, ballot envelope, and vote -o Find the write-in space on the ballot stub or envelope. There are three things you must do. Write or print the title of the office, the name of the candidate, and put an X in the box to the left of the name. Remember those three things. Write the title of the office, name of the candidate, and put an X in the box. That's it. Complete the ballot and hand it to the election judge as you leave. Doug Bell, 5.30 and 10 on 19 Eyewitness News. 19! The more you like, the more you know! Bradley Braves advance to the first round of the Missouri Valley Conference postseason basketball tournament. 30th win of the season for the Bradley Braves, the 21st in a row. And let's go over to Bob Ortigal with head coach Dick Versace. Coach Versace, number one, congratulations on a, a big victory. It's the end of an era. We talked about that throughout the game, that it possibly could be the end of the year, an era for West Texas State, not only as a Missouri Valley Conference member, but also as a Division I member. I admire their effort today. I think they played very proudly. You know, I think uh, Gary Moss is, um, is, a, is a, uh, one of the finest young coaches in the country. Somebody ought to snap this, this guy up because um, I've been watching him for two years now and handling a very, very difficult situation with his school's decision to go to Division II handle the situation with the kids and technically I think he's extremely sound you know he had a brilliant junior college record and then I think he played us today is about as smart as he could play us and he's done it each time we've played we beat him by 20 at our place but we had a tough time with him down there and we had a tough time with him here today you know if you've been in this business very long you, you really appreciate the fact that when you play on a weekday 
at one o'clock in a tournament, you just have to set everything else aside and you play against a team that you've already beaten twice and you've accomplished all that you've accomplished all year. Did it affect or change any of the preparation at all as far as the basketball game was concerned for you? Well, you know, Bob, I thought we had a rather spirited practice here yesterday. And then, of course, when you have a uh, 1 o'clock game, you don't have any chance to come and shoot. And I thought a few of our kids didn't get untracked. But then partly that wasn't due to what uh, West Texas was doing. I mean, they were pulling it out and running a spread, taking it down to about 15 seconds. Then we got lulled to sleep a little bit. We could never get our rhythms going. And then we missed a few jumpers that we normally hit. One thing leads to another. And you got to give them some credit because they hit some tough shots and, and played some very good defense. I thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I really noticed in the first half with 7.02 on the clock and in the second half with 5.11 on the clock, you took timeouts, you went to a man-to-man -man defense. At that point, they did not score with either ball possession, the next ball possession. You really broke the momentum in the first half of the man-to-man -man, and in the second half, then you went right back to the zone, I think, to protect Jimmy Les. Was that your thinking at that time? Yeah, in the first half, uh, I, I went back to the zone when I got a five-point lead. We like to be on those odd numbers because you see with a five-point lead, it's going to take three unanswered baskets. We're a pretty good offensive team, and that's not going to happen to us very often for them to get the lead. So, uh, But in the second half, you're right, Jimmy got the fourth, and we were in the man, and uh, I went right back to the zone when we got the three-point lead. And at the offensive end of the floor, you were really concentrating getting the ball to Mike Williams and trying to clear people away from him so he could use his size and strength inside. Was that your thinking? Yeah, we, we really originally came out in the first part of the half, Bob. We wanted, to, we wanted to go inside to Donald and to Mike, but you know, this is Donald's hometown, and his parents are here, and he was just a little tight today, and the game was, uh, was way too tight for us to work out his tightness, so uh, I'm sure he'll be fine tomorrow. I'm looking for a big game out of Donald Powell. One more question. I think it'd be unfair for us to, to conclude this without saying something about the, the other three basketball games that are going to be played today. you have any response to that at all? The, the other three games are going to be played today? Right. You mean the fact that we have this format? Is that what you're making you reference to? Do you care about, about who wins, where you are? Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a tournament, you know, and uh, whether it's uh, the Rainbow Classic or whether it's uh, this postseason tournament, you just got to take them one at a time. You know, you got to look to see who your next opponent for us is going to be Illinois State or uh, Wichita State. We'll stay and watch that game, and we'll have to play a whole lot better to beat either of those teams tomorrow. Well, you've certainly done that on many occasions. We appreciate your taking the time to come by. Congratulations not only on an undefeated season in the Missouri Valley Conference and 30 victories and 21 straight. And I could go on and on and on. It's been I'm great sure. for you. Uh, we're happy for you. Back to Wayne Larrabee. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Where to go? I'm standing with Jim Les, the player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. First off, Jimmy, let me congratulate you on that. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think I have to thank my teammates and Coach Versace because without them, it, it would not have been possible. And I, thanks to the media and those people who voted for me. Jimmy, let me ask you about today's game. It, it was a bit of a struggle in, in the early going, of you guys getting on track. What was it like for a player out there in the first game? It's, it's almost like a morning game. It's like winning ugly is, is what we call it. Uh, you know, we're going to take the win. It, it's very tough to get up. You know, there aren't many people here. It's early in the afternoon. And it, it's tough to get going, you know, mentally and physically. And so we had a tough time executing, you know, doing the things we wanted to do. And you got to give West Texas some credit. They played very well. They hit some tough shots from the outside. And uh, we're just happy to get out here with a W. Jimmy, do you feel the pressure of having the streak going? 21 wins in a row and, and the seeding, the top seed in the tournament. Is there pressure there for this ball club? Because I don't sense it as a reporter covering the Bradley Graves. I don't sense that you guys feel you're under any kind of pressure. Not Undefeated in conference. Not at all. Uh, we, you know, we're very loose. You know, we're not cocky, but we're confident. And, uh, you know, we don't feel the pressure. We don't look back at the streak and say, oh, you know, what number game is this coming up or, or whatever it is. You know, we're just taking them one at a time, and that's the only way you can do it. You know, especially against teams like this in the Valley. If you overlook somebody, you're going to get beat, and we can't afford to do that. Jimmy, it took a while to get Hersey Hawkins into the offense. And there are many reasons for that, obviously. And I know West Texas State was paying a lot of attention to Hersey Hawkins. What were they doing out there to kind of take him out of the flow? early. Well, right, what Hawk does to get uh, open early is get out on the break. And uh, I think they must have assigned Singletary to him. And as soon as Hawk took off, he was right with him. So we didn't get our customary two or three easy buckets at the beginning of the game with Hawk getting out and running. Uh, and, you know, they were shading him on the offensive end wherever he was. So, uh, you know, it just it was cause for Hawk to do a little more movement. And uh, we ran him on the baseline a few times and ran him off a few screens. And 
know, once he gets in the flow, it's all over. I tell you, I had to, as a football broadcaster, appreciate it when you brought in Mike Williams and you had Greg Jones in a double low post down there. That's a lot of muscle. It's yeah. like going up against an offensive line. I tell you, I would hate to guard Hawk because Hawk runs off those screens, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad I'm not in the other team. Jimmy, I just want to get one more comment from you. That is, we enjoy so often your abilities on the alley -oop pass to Hersey Hawkins. Uh, I mean, do you guys say down the court, hey, I'm going to be coming on the back door? I mean, is there a, just a natural communication between you two? Uh, we've been playing together long enough, and, and I can kind of sense, you know, when he's looking for it. And, and it's it's also key by the defense. When they're coming up a little too high on the, on the zone defense, you know, I know Hawk sees it and he's going to go for it. And with a guy like him, with his jumping ability, if I throw it somewhere within the vicinity of Oklahoma, he's going to go and dunk it. So my job is easy. Well, I tell you what, we've been talking a lot about Hersey Hawkins behind his back. I imagine we should give him his say, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's go to Bob Ortego with Hersey Hawkins. I'm standing here with the other half of that uh, dynamic duo at the guard positions for the Bradley Braves. Hersey Hawkins, uh, Hersey, congratulations on a good win. Uh, how'd you feel about playing at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? Well, it's tough. It's always pretty tough getting up to play those afternoons games, especially, you know, when there's not too many people here, you know. That takes a lot out of you. Then again, we have to just come out and play our regular game and get, you know, motivated. That's what we usually do. Let me ask you a question. In the first 10 minutes, it appeared that offensively they were doing a pretty good job of, of trying to take you out of the basketball game. Uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about that? Did you feel like you were into the game the first 10 minutes? You certainly responded from that point on, but it, it looked a little bit like, like you weren't really into the flow. Is that the case? Well, I wasn't really into the flow, not offensively, but you know, I still have to go out there and work hard, you know, because I know if I keep working hard, things will finally come my way. You know, the first half, you know, I was uh, I wasn't getting out on the break that well. That seemed as if they were assigning someone to my lane. So every time I ran down, he was right there with me. So we didn't really get the normal two or three baskets on a fast break that we usually get. But as long as I keep running and we keep pushing it up, I think those things will come. How does a player like yourself, just a sophomore, feel about having such an outstanding season, not only individually, but collectively? Uh, having 30 victories, going through the, the conference season, undefeated at 16 and 0, does it add any additional pressure to you personally, or does it add any additional pressure to your teammates? No, I don't think so. You know, we're having fun. And I think mainly my success has come from, you know, my teammates. They're a great, great, bunch, great bunch of guys. You know, they help me a lot. They motivate me. You know, I think when you have those type of players, players playing with you, and it can't help you nothing but to, you can't help you nothing but to be yourself, you know. And as far as this season, it's sort of a surprise to us all, you know. But once we got that 20 and 1, 21 and 1, you know, and we knew that we were winning constantly in these, those one, two point games, it wasn't just luck. Then, you know, we felt that we could do anything, and we're just going to keep playing it out and see how far we can go. It's a feeling then that, that all of you possess inside when you get into a situation where it's two or three minutes left to play and it's a one, two, or a, a three point basketball game. It's, it's almost a situation that you appear to, to relish. I mean, it, you, you welcome it because you respond so very well. Is that, is that, is that what it is? Yes, I think so. I think in all situations, we're really confident. Plus, in practice, we work on situations like that every day. So we're used to, you know, one minute situation, two minute situation, these kind of things. And, you know, Coach Versace keeps us well prepared for situations like that. And when it comes to game situations, we know what to do. So that's really no pressure. Okay, Hersey, thanks for taking the time to come by. And, and congratulations to you personally and to your teammates. Okay, thank you. Continued success to you, young man. Wayne, congratulations, Hersey. All right. First game is the history of the 10th Annual Missouri Valley Conference Postseason Basketball Tournament, 61-55. The Bradley Braves have defeated the West Texas State Buffaloes. Of course, again, we remind those of you looking in at Peoria, coming up, it'll be Illinois State and Wichita State. Let's take a look at some of the final stats of this afternoon's game. And there we go, field goal percentages. Bradley shot 53%, which is about what they do through the season. Well, 53% is good shooting, certainly, and West Texas State goes 44% from the field, and I'll tell you, they shot the ball outside, 9 out of 10 from the free throw line, but Bradley counters that with 10 out of 11. You get 90% by both teams. Rebounding certainly had a lot to do with it. 34 rebounds for Bradley. Many of those were on the offensive board. Converted the baskets, only 23 for West Texas. Five turnovers for West Texas State. That's just a very fine performance, Wayne, when you play a game against uh, a team as talented as, Bra as Bradley and only turn it over five times. Bradley did have ten turnovers, which is too many for the Braves. I'm, I'm sure they'd like not to have that many. And when you look at the points in the lane or points in the paint for
for West Texas State, only four for Bradley, 33. So that takes you back to the offensive rebounding statistics, certainly, and has to be the difference in the game, along with being able to put the ball into to, uh, massive Mike Williams inside. Well, massive Mike had about 18 points. He's somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 rebounds the last time we checked, so he had an outstanding game. I think one of the subtle keys, though, was that Earl Davis, a fine point guard uh, for West Texas State, was unable to really penetrate against uh, the variance of defenses that Bradley was using. That's correct. They, they didn't allow him to penetrate. He really didn't force that issue very much, though, and maybe that's why they had only five turnovers. He was pretty content just to get the ball over to Singletary, but that wasn't a bad idea with the way he was shooting the ball outside. All right, again, I remind you that we've got another game coming up here on our afternoon doubleheader in Peoria. Two more games coming up tonight in the Missouri Valley Conference the postseason tournament, and then, of course, the semifinals will be coming up tomorrow night, a doubleheader, and then the final on Wednesday. Let me ask you as a coach, three games in three days, uh, you know, those of us in the media, you and I were talking about it, we equate it to being, well, what about me at 30 years old trying to play three games in three days? That's going to be tough to do, but for a 20-year-old kid, I guess it's not the same equation. I'll tell you what, it would be hard for you to do it at age 30. <laughs> be even harder. It would have been hard. It would be even harder for me to do it at age 46, but let me tell it doesn't. It should not be a factor. If you're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, and you can't play a basketball game a day <laughs> for three straight days, then you're not in shape or something wrong. Um, you know, I can remember when we used to have to play two games in a day to win a state championship in the state of Illinois. So I just I just do not buy off on the fact that, uh, that you're going to be tired. You're not tired at age 20. You're never tired. Two games? Was that back in your peaking days? or Back at peaking, yeah. All right. Again, the final score, a 61-55 victory for the Bradley Braves. They advance. They'll take on the winner of the next game that you'll see. And again, that'll be Wichita State and Illinois State. And those of you in Peoria will be watching that and will be joined, of course, by uh, Mark Allen, our colleague who is with us at halftime and will be taking you through the play-by-play -play of that game. I'll get a break. The coach will be with Mark Allen, and they'll take you through that ball game. And uh, that'll be the end of the doubleheader in the Peoria area from the Missouri Valley Postseason Tournament. Again, Bradley's next game will be coming up tomorrow evening, and it'll be the first game of the doubleheader as they'll take on the winner of the game you'll see next to Wichita State and Illinois State. Well, and it, it'll be a fun night of basketball tomorrow night. It's going to be a fun second game. You really do want to hang around and watch that one. You know, the thing you got to like about this is, is that little rivalry that exists, uh, not only between the schools, but the coaches. All right. Again, the final score is 61-55 for Bob Ortigal, Wayne Larrabee, saying so long for the Tulsa Convention Center. This Missouri Valley postseason tournament game has been brought to you by... Valley Conference postseason tournament game has been a presentation of SNI Sports Network of St. Louis.